Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to talk here about uh, something that you heard about since the keynote and uh, the Gradle plugins and everything. Or uh, like uh, Luke said, uh, if you want to play, you have to be on Bintray. So <laughs> what is Bintray? Uh, so I'm going to talk here uh, 30 minutes, a high overview of uh, why did we create Bintray, what it is, and uh, how can you use it, and how can you interact with it. So basically, the main goal is uh, uh, de develop, dev deploy, distribute, the 3D, what we called. So I'm Fred Simon. I'm the chief architect of JFrog, the creator of, uh, uh, of frogs. So we have a lot of frogs. Uh, there is only uh, six left here. <laughs> And uh, what do we do? We do Artifactory and Bintray. So uh, Artifactory is basically uh, for you to aggregate all your uh, artifacts, whatever you are using and whatever you are producing locally, close to your build environment, close to your developer, close to your deployment data center, or wherever you need binaries, artifacts uh, to be aggregated, um, distributed, tagged, uh, certified, secured, and things like that. And Bintray. The main goal of uh, Bintray is that uh, everybody wants your creation. You created some really beautiful piece of code, and uh, you are uh, really, really happy about it, especially if it's open source. Uh, and uh, the main thing that you want is basically to provide it to uh, all the masses that are begging for salvation and really wants your code. Okay? And so the main issue, how do you connect those two? So uh, that's basically a problem that we had since the creation of JFrog, because Artifactory was created in 2006 as an open source product. Uh, we used the SourceForge. So, uh, at the time, it, uh, it sounded logical. We put uh, all our code, our subversion repository, and our binaries and everything on the SourceForge. And uh, we, uh, we distributed Artifactory like that. Um, today, basically, it's not uh, that easy. And the landscape is uh, qu um, kind of wide and uh, disparate. But the main, main issue that we see today, which is kind of strange compared to what we had in SourceForge, is that today when you are downloading binaries, when actually people here are getting your source code, okay, they don't know you anymore. You completely disappeared from the picture. They just see an S3 bucket, they just see a Maven Central, or they just see uh, whatever. So Ruby, uh, rubygems.org, for example, or uh, uh, NPM, there, there are some other repositories that try to put you back in the picture as the creator of your Brian code. But uh, today, especially in the Java world, you really disappear from the picture. Nobody knows. How many of you knows who uh, is the writer of Log4j? Everybody's using it. Everybody's downloading the code. Nobody knows who he is. <laughs> so, how can you do that? Well, first, you need to find a place where you can store your sources. OK, I'm talking here uh, open source mainly, but um, basically after it's a match to a private cloud or, or anyone. OK, so you need to find a place where you can store your sources, make them available. Now, the amount of people that want to read your source code or compile your source code or access your source code is, I mean, hopefully if your code is uh, successful and useful and people want to use it, is a lot, lot lower than the people that want to uh, access your binaries. So you need to build them. OK, so here you use Gradle. You need to get your sources and create binaries out of it. And then you need to store them somewhere. OK, so you can store them on your local disk. That's not going to help many people. And so you need to deploy them. OK, so in a SaaS environment, you deploy them to your uh, to uh, whatever cloud application, pass application, or, or th things like that. Um, so this is um, basically not what we are talking about. We are talking about how to distribute your binaries. Okay? We are talking about how do you do library distribution, and how do you provide. Uh, uh, um, it can be library. It can be tool. Uh, it can be any kind of application that needs to end as a bunch of executable or, or binaries on the end user's side. They need to download your binaries and execute the code uh, on some kind of uh, platform. For this part here, usually what we see today for most of our users and customers 
is that uh, you can use Artifactory or an RPM repo or, or an RSync or a local disk or whatever. Well, but uh, with Artifactory, you uh, create an Artifactory server very close to your data center where you put your code in production and you deploy uh, the binaries on your SaaS uh, platform or uh, whatever deployment platform uh, from this store. Okay, so the goal of, Artif of uh, Bintray is to help you do that, to do help you distribute your binaries to uh, as many people as possible and to make it easy for you uh, to deploy them and reach your users. So, wow. Okay, so I'm not going to use that, sorry. Uh, let's see if it works. Um, It's a very, okay, <laughs> how do you say it? Um, the contrast here is, uh, is quite uh, weak. Uh, but it's uh, a lot better than the screenshot I took before. Okay, uh, so here is a bin tray, uh, 18,000 repositories uh, serving uh, uh, 87,000 packages, so it's without uh, counting the, the version, okay? and. Uh, so the main goal of uh, Bintray is to keep the binaries yours, okay? to communicate them to your users, to find if you are a consumer, okay? and of course to be fast and reliable. So it's based on, on the CDN. Um, so here I'm a, I'm a stranger, I'm a nice lo looking stranger, and so I can sign up to, uh, to uh, Bintray using my GitHub account, my Twitter account, or my Google account, okay? Whatever, so uh, with uh, Google, you can uh, also uh, LinkedIn, or you can create your own uh, sign up and uh, not link your, your account. I'm gonna sign in, and I'm gonna use my GitHub account. This is the one uh, I'm using here. Uh, so now I'm Freddy, uh, and uh, I have a bunch of uh, uh, repositories that I own that you cannot read. Uh, which are a, a demo and uh, one for uh, uh, OpenGL. I really like to do some OpenGL stuff. Uh, and there is some uh, most popular repository at the top, and I'm part of some uh, organization. So if I click on myself here, uh, normally people are watching me, I'm watching some other people, and I'm part of two organizations, uh, JFrog and Jenkins. I'm not part of Jenkins, but I help them doing the deployment. So. They accepted me inside their organization. Okay. And uh, here are the list of packages that I'm watching and uh, the list of um, uh, um, watcher and watching uh, people that, that I'm using. You can see here, I'm going to go to uh, view hall. Wow, the network here. Uh, so you can see here the activity on, uh, on, uh, on Bintray. Uh, so the new version. Um, IBM just uh, release uh, Enmon Visualizer. Okay, uh, not me. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Jenkins release plugins metrics. Uh, so you can see the activity here uh, on um, on Bintray. Uh, there is a new version here uh, of Console Vault. So you can see here the the activity and the people releasing new version of a new product. Okay. So I'm going to go here to this uh, specific uh, plugin. Once you go to a package, so let, let me go. I'm going to go to this one here. Okay. I'm not going to. Wow. Okay. So this is the mo the, the meta model that uh, we are using inside uh, inside Bintray, and uh, this is uh, wh what I'm showing and how Bintray works. Basically, you are getting in as a user, so you can activate your uh, your account with. Uh, with yourself or with uh, GitHub, Twitter, or uh, Google. And you can be part or create organization. Okay, you just go. If you want to create your own organization, there is no problem. And uh, once you created an organization, you can accept other organization administrator or add any other users to uh, the organization as normal uh, user of the organization. A user or 
an organization has some repository. So the repository today that we support are generic repository. If you want to deploy uh, executable file, MSI, uh, there is a very popular uh, Ruby installer for Windows, for example, on, uh, on uh, Bintray. Uh, Debian and RPM. Okay? So for Maven, Debian, and RPM, Bintray is going to calculate the Maven metadata XML, the Debian uh, uh, repo data, uh, the RPM repo data, or the Debian uh, indexes for you. So you just push the Debian, the deb file, the RPM file, or the jar and the POM file, and um, uh, Bintray is going to take care of calculating the indexes, the indexes that are needed for those re different repository types. Okay, so you own repository uh, for the generic repository. Of course, Bintree is not going to do anything. It's just going to uh, display the files uh, that you have in your repository. A repository can contain packages. So you just create a package. So here, packages is really a product. It's really higher level. Okay, it's not like uh, in uh, Maven. It's not a group ID, artifact ID. Okay, it's a lot uh, higher than that usually. It can be a full product. Okay. And for this product, you have uh, multiple versions every time you do a release. Okay. Now, Bintray is a release platform. It's when you have a release and you want to push it to the public. It's not for snapshots. If you want to man manage the snapshots, I'm going to show you after, you can use uh, the JCenter, um, JCenter OSS uh, jfrog.org integration, which allow you to manage your snapshots in an artifactory server automatically. We provide this for you. Uh, for free, and then inside from ossjfrog.org, you can push directly to Bintray whenever you have a release. So you have versions which are uh, releases, and then for every, every one of those versions, you have a bunch of files. Okay, here in terms of path recognition, if you are Maven, it needs to respect the path of Maven, but it doesn't need to respect anything about the name of the packages or the name of the version that you have. Okay, so you can be really a bad citizen and put. A Maven version that has nothing to do with the version inside Bintray. But the main rule here is that all the files of your repository needs to belong to be um, to belong to one version only. Okay. Uh, what it means is that between the different versions and packages, the different files are separated inside your repository, but the path that they uh, respect is your own uh, doing. Okay, so the layout that you want to have on Bintray, on your repository on Bintray, is not enforced. Okay. Now, if you choose a repository type, which is a Maven type, and you don't deploy POM file and JAR file that respect the Maven layout, there will be no Maven metadata XML calculated, and there was just a bunch of files here that nobody can read. Okay, but that's your problem. Uh, so, yeah, for, for example, there is a nice blog about how to do that for your P2 repository. So we start to have quite a lot of uh, P2 uh, 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 Eclipse repository on Bintray. So how to do the layout of your P2 indexes and, and P2 repositories uh, on Bintray. Um, since we don't have any constraints about the layout, there is no, no issue about deploying your, your P2 repository over there. So you have here, you can see, here is the organization, here is the repository, and here is the name of the package. For each one of these packages, a different version here. Uh, so it's a fully uh, a REST, uh, um, REST URL, by the way, here also, Jenkins, Maven, Plugins, uh, 305 view. Okay. And uh, so here, I yeah, I should not go here. Since I'm a owner of the Jenkins, you can see that I can actually upload files and I, I can do uh, all kinds of the different things. I'm going to go to a, um, to a space where I don't have access. <coughs> mm. OK, let's take <coughs> reflection. <coughs> and so for the files here, you can see that this is the reflection uh, package, okay, part of the, the reflection repository. And there is actually three Maven modules under the same package. Okay? They are released with the same version, but they are three Maven modules under the same package. 
Okay? So that's, for example, that's really, really important for you when you start to do the Gradle plugins. Okay? Uh, when you do the Gradle plugins, you can actually deploy multiple plugins under one version, one package, okay? and have it indexed for containing multiple uh, plugins for, for multiple jars. Uh, what, what else you have here? Uh, yeah, so you have the, the statistics of uh, how many downloads uh, of uh, this uh, specific project. And you have, ah, here, you have the Open JDK also on Bintray if you want. Um, And you have, so what's going to be added to the plugin portal of Gradle? An ability to rate as a user and to watch here the version. Okay? So here I'm watching, I'm one of the watchers, so I can unwatch. But once I'm watching a certain package, okay, every time there is a new version coming in for this specific package, I'm going to get an email. Okay, so all the packages here. So I'm watching uh, uh, Artifactory, uh, uh, Spring Core, for example, uh, Jenkins, uh, things like that. So I get an event and I get an email. Okay. Um, usually today, what we saw is that a lot, a lot of the users they use actually Twitter. Okay. So you can just tweet here as a user and say, "Great, I, I like to tweet the fact that there is this new version. This is the one I'm, I'm using." You can do reviews. So the reviews here are going to be linked also with the plugin portal inside Gradle and the statistics about which the main goal of the statistics for our users is to know which one of the version are actually popular or which one of the package are actually popular. Okay, to do some uh, some filtering for the Gradle plugins environment, it's going to be quite important to know if you find three different Avro plugin, which one is actually the most downloaded one. Uh, so by doing this uh, aggregation of the different statistics with a bunch of uh, tags here also. Uh, so this is what I want to talk about. Uh, inside this uh, model of user organization, uh, repository packages, okay? After, from the packages and the version, you can add any kind of tag and metadata as you want via the REST API, okay? So we have an extensive REST API here that is heavily used by Gradle Bintray plugin. By, uh, there is a, a, a Scala also a, a plugin. There is, uh, I think, uh, a Python one. Uh, there is the Java one that we provide. And so there is a lot of different interface and different users that created plugin. There is a, a bash one, uh, someone with a, a curl and a bash. So one thing here about uh, when you create a package via the plugin, the main thing that is mandatory is the license. So I think you saw it in the, in the demo for how to create a plugin. So it's um, GitHub that started it. Uh, I think in Google Code also they had the same issue, and we have the same issue. Basically, today, if you provide some open source code out there and you make it downloadable and usable without a license, it's kind of a break of, a break of trust. Okay? So the license is mandatory. You have to say uh, uh, what, you, what license is your project and what, uh, how you want to publish it. Okay. When you do that, uh, create, delete, update, uh, whatever, you can actually also add uh, any kind of uh, extra attribute and properties to anything. Okay. So you can add attribute to uh, a package or to a version. Okay. So this is the way the Gradle plugins uh, portal is working against Artifactory. It's using all those uh, attribute and attribute values by type, so they have string, they have numbers, um, and they have date, so to allow you to uh, tag and uh, modify uh, any kind of uh, environment and property. Why it's important here? Uh, this is basically where we are going and we are working with, uh, with the Gradle guys to do download the latest version of the GCC plugin compatible with Gradle 1.12. Okay, how can you uh, do this kind of queries? So that's exactly here. You're going to have uh, uh, different values for uh, the, the different numbers and, and, uh, and environment, and you're going to be able to basically, from the plugin and the plugin portal, do the query 
against the bin tree environment and uh, return this environment. So that's going to be the next stage of the plugin portal. Okay. Today, uh, the plugin portal is forcing you to provide some of this information for the tag and, and, and the environment, uh, but um, very fast, uh, depending on how you're going to build your Gradle plugin. The version of the Gradle plugin that you build it for is going to be tagged here, and it's going to be your responsibility to say it break with the Gradle 1.14, it break. So this is why the review and the, the review process can be actually after coded. Okay. The goal here is to get into some kind of crowdsourcing of the package system and, and the package distribution. Okay. As soon as one of you guys said, wait, this uh, GCC plugin on uh, uh, Gradle 2.2 uh, is uh, completely broken since the version 1.14, but after it's okay, it's going to be uh, crowdsourced and reviewed here. And the goal is to add it as a parameter and make it automatic for the rest of you. Okay. Not to have. So, yeah, the goal here is to get and set the attributes and, uh, and update them. Um, and when you do the attribute search here, we use, um, uh, it's, uh, oh, I always forget, uh, between Mongo and Couch. Um, someone knows what is the language here? <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, so that's the uh, uh, query language, a dynamic uh, query language that you can do against Bintray that will allow you uh, to query any kind of uh, packages based on the attribute constraints and the uh, attribute uh, environment. Okay, so uh, we uh, we are more than uh, welcoming um, uh, uh, any kind of uh, report usage or. Uh, environment or things uh, uh, based on that. So of course, we are working with the Gradle guys to use that for the, for the Gradle compatibility matrix and uh, all this kind of stuff. Uh, for information, we already uh, started working with the Scala, Scala guys about this for the Scala version and the binaries. They put all the SBT plugin on Bintray also. And so they, they start to use this kind of. Uh, um, everything is in process, in progress, OK? So don't. Uh, don't, uh, uh, don't expect it today, today, but uh, the, the Bintray architecture supports it. The Bintray architecture is there for you uh, to do these kind of things. Um, we are working with the plat platform providers to uh, actually uh, provide, uh, provide this for you. If uh, one of the main goal here for Bintray is if you are a platform provider, if you have any kind of like uh, Jenkins uh, that has plugins or any kind of tools and you want to have a community that generates plugins and you want to integrate these plugins into your platform, that's what Bintray was built for. One reason why Bintray is built for that is, um, so by the way, the um, uh, arrangement file in the storage here. You have all this documentation. Everything that I'm talking about is in the documentation on, of Bintray. Okay. One of the main reasons why uh, this works is um, is uh, what I showed before, is the ability to link. Okay, So for example, here, this is the Gradle, Gradle plugins. Okay, This is the, the list of packages that's gone, that are listed in the plugins portal. Okay, Now, if you do Gradle plugins and you look for Gradle plugins inside Bintray, there is a lot of them. Okay, Now, they are not all here. Okay, There is, a, there is a, a four pages of 20. I don't know how many there is. Uh, but I have created my great new uh, uh, Gradle plugin. I go to the uh, uh, plugin portal, and then I want to include here to ask for my package to be included as a Gradle plugin. Okay, this is the big, big difference. How do you make so? Even if it's the most amazing, brilliant, brilliant code, okay, for a lot of platform and a lot of environment. If you are not noticed or not part of a big popular repository, there is very few chance that people will find you, or they, it will make it a lot more complicated for people to find you. 
Okay? And here we created basically a platform for you to say, I think my package is really, really nice. I will really like if you add it to the global Gradle plugins. And all the Gradle users will be able to include and download your package automatically by just doing plugins ID and provide the ID of your plugin that you created. Okay? So by doing here, include my package. Uh, so I, I don't have much package uh, that I'm that I'm proud of that I want to include into uh, uh, it's all the Jenkins packages. So that's all the package that I own that are part of my repos. Okay, either as or organization owner, uh, part of an organization, or as uh, an individual. Okay, and so once I do this uh, include here, it will end up exactly like those four here. You can see that from the uh, Antelar Gradle plugin, the Build Info Extractor Gradle, the Gradle Avro plugin, and the Ascidator Gradle plugin, none of them are Gradleware plugins. Okay? All of them are Cédric Champeau, Andres Almirai, uh, David uh, M. Carr, and uh, Jeff Rock. Okay? So here we have, so you don't see the beautiful, uh, but so there is here now a sim link that is done at the package level. Okay? Today, this part, by the way, is not automated. It's a demand that you have to go to Bintray as a user and click on it. But once your package is included, every new version that you are doing is automatically included. Okay? The only thing that uh, Gradle plugin can do is say, no, this version is really uh, has some kind of corruption or whatever. They can refuse the creation of, uh, of, uh, of this specific version. But so you do this include package in the Gradle plugins uh, uh, repo, and you can do this include package in the JCenter repo to have it as part of the JCenter. As you saw since the beginning of this conference, JCenter is already part of uh, Grape, by the way. So it's part of uh, uh, Gradle by default and for the Gradle and all the Gradle plugins. Uh, it's part of Grape by default as a, as a Grape downloader. It's part of SBT uh, uh, latest version. It's, uh, so it's already used uh, heavily as a, as a replacement for, uh, for Maven Central. And so if you want your packages to be immediately available inside JCenter and have everybody downloaded from JCenter, you do exactly the same and you will need to do the same for uh, your Gradle plugin to include it inside JCenter here to do a request. And one important information that I want to provide before I close, what's going to happen is that we're going to make sure that all the files of your package that are under the path of your group ID, so it's by, by basically regular expression path filters, saying, OK, everything that starts with uh, org.jfrog.gradle, OK, under this repository is going to be uh, included from this package into the Gradle plugins. OK, so the link. Between, uh, between packages and the actual files is done by a regular expression filter from this uh, uh, dynamic link to make sure that you don't put files that basically uh, override the files of someone else. Okay, so it's by path, regular expression filter. Once it's done, your plugin is going to be uh, publicly available on JCenter and everybody can use it uh, if you provide the good uh, here the good properties at each version level. If you use all the plugins that were shown uh, uh, today, okay, you will have it here. So the Gradle plugin, this is the parameter of Bintray, okay, that says for uh, this uh, specific version. So what's nice here, I don't know if you, if you see, but this is managed by Andres. Okay, Andres is managing all those parameters. But they are queryable and uh, uh, searchable from the global Gradle plugins once, from the plugin portal. Okay, so it's, it's a nice seamless delegation of responsibility. Andres is responsible for the tagging and the property and of, of this stuff, and the Gradle plugins guys can do the search and can get this information from their own repository. So there is a nice uh, delegation of responsibility and environment. Thank you. Good, good lunch. <laughs> <laughs>